Thank you so much, Ladi. And this is the venue of uh, the national public hearing uh, being organized by the Senate Committee on the Constitutional Amendment. This is the second day, and presentations have been taken again by a group of people and individuals. And we're seeing more um, involvement of people from the diaspora. A lot of uh, people have been involved in this public hearing today, uh, virtually. We've seen a lot of them delivering their presentations online, and there are people who have made physical presentation. Quite interesting presentations we've seen today. For example, some of those of the school of thought that this amendment is not necessary is um, a, a constitutional lawyer, senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, Mike Ozakome, who feels that this process is unnecessary, um, that what we need is an overall of the process. Um, is conversing that we need to reduce the cost of governance. He's also saying that the federal lawmakers, the number that we are having, is not sustainable. But I told you earlier that a lot of people are also talking about what is the fate of Nigerians living outside of the country when it comes to voting, their participation in governance, with their voice count when it comes to issues relating to their country, even though they are not living here. Well, you know that there is a, an organization in that, uh, under this administration that is catering for the interest of uh, Nigerians living out of the country. is the Nigerian Diaspora Commission, chaired by Honorable Abike Dabri. They also made... Uh, a presentation today. It might be an agency of government uh, looking in that direction, but they have their own worries about how things need to be done. I'm being joined on this track at the moment by Honorable Abike Dabiri to give us a sense of what they want and uh, the fears as we relating to the Nigerian constitution and whether or not it caters for the interests of people living outside of the country. Honorable Abike Dabiri joins us on this track. Thank you so much, Honorable uh, Dabiri, for joining us uh, today. What is the crux of your presentations? You want the voice of people living in diaspora to be heard, but what tops that presentation today? Diaspora voting. Diaspora voting. Now we have a first time in history we have a diaspora policy which has just been passed by the Federal Executive Council and part of the policy supports diaspora voting. And then too, for the first time again in the history of Nigeria, we're able to get Nigerians from all over the world, Australia, Africa, Asia, Middle East, Canada, America, France, Europe, to be part of this public hearing. So Nigerians in diaspora actually participated in a public hearing for the first time. And the key word is, how can they vote? in the next elections. It's interesting because this cannot stand alone. It also has to do with um, the amendment of the Electoral Act. Absolutely. So are you looking in that direction? Are you having a joint multi-stakeholder, uh, a multi-stakeholder conversation in this regard? We've already been doing that with INEC, even before today. And in fact, INEC has the modalities in place. And if the National Assembly does amend the Constitution to make it possible for the diaspora to vote, INEC will be the one to take a decision on when it's going to start, how it's going to start, when it's going to start. 119 countries already have diaspora voting. In Brazil, for instance, you cannot vote if you don't return to your country within three years. So there are many ways to look at it. And the most important is the definition of a diaspora. A diaspora is someone who is a legitimate resident in another country. You're paying your tax. You have an address. You are not an illegal immigrant. And that is very instructive. So it's not just that you run to some country and we we'll say you vote from there. You are a legitimate resident of that country. And then, you know, the diaspora having an economic factor in Nigeria. I mean, billions of dollars of remittances. Beyond being an economic factor, they are beginning to be an investment factor in Nigeria. We're, we're going to have the Diaspora Investment Trust Fund, where Nigerians in diaspora can decide where they want to put their money in and all that. So we can't ignore 17 million Nigerians estimated in the diaspora. We can't ignore people who are doing such great things, not only totally, uh, abroad, but also in Nigeria. So. The Ninth National Assembly will make it history. They just amend that section of the Constitution to make it possible for them to vote. The how, when, where will be handled by INEC. In some countries, of course, it's only presidential election. In some countries, they started with maybe people posted, you know, like if you're posted abroad to work, it doesn't stop you from uh, exercising your rights. So there are many ways to look at it. And I believe that after this public hearing, we'll have a win-win situation for Nigeria and its diaspora. Are you hopeful about the process that your presentation and your agitation in this exercise will go through? 
I'm very optimistic. Apart from my presentation, we have the Diaspora Voting Council, made up of a group of Nigerians who on their own get themselves, got themselves together, funded themselves to lobby for diaspora voting. We also had for the first time Nigerians from all over the world tell, tell the Senate that, look, we want, to have, we want to be able to vote. So, and then we as NIDCOM, we're just the bridge between Nigeria and its diaspora. So I'm very optimistic. One of my first optimism, even away from diaspora voting, is that this question amendment must work. I was part of the um, Seventh Assembly. It started, it never ended. Eighth Assembly is started, it never ended. I'm hoping that the Ninth Assembly, it's a tough task, but I'm hoping that the Ninth Assembly will start and end this and make history to have amended the Constitution. Thank you so much, Honorable Abike Dabiri, for talking to us. Yes, uh, she mentioned um, the Nigeria Diaspora Voting Council. I have the chair of the Nigeria Diaspora Voting Council with me. Adi Omole joins us right now. Uh, he's the chair of the Nigeria Diaspora Voting Council. Thank you so much, uh, Adi, for joining us. What is your major, uh, uh, what, what comes top on your presentation today? I think it was just the fact that uh, we needed to have diaspora voting ASAP. Uh, with the ongoing constitutional uh, review, we feel that um, this is the time. And um, remember that this bill has actually passed first and second reading at the National Assembly. So it is time to actually get it done and actually get it done finally. And that's why we're here today to also present a paper in support of that particular bill. So, but with the way it's going, do you have faith in it, the process? Definitely, we've, we've got faith in it. And remember that we've been across the country. We've been um, to the north, to the south, east and west. We've been going to all the zonal um, hearings. Uh, and we're quite glad at the process and the way that it's actually gone um, this far. You live in the UK and you know how things work. Are you looking at a similar scenario there that can be imported into our process here? Definitely. I mean, we all learn every day. There's uh, that opportunity to learn. And I'm sure that um, the electoral umpire, INEC, they're actually looking at different models because um, we also invited them sometime in 2020. We had um, an all-round um, workshop where they actually came and presented five good models. And at this present time, they're looking to um, implement well. When the law is actually finally changed and um, assented to, um, amended and assented to by the president, they're looking to actually have um, a model that's fit for purpose and that will be um, the best one for Nigeria. Ade Omale, thank you so much for talking to us. I appreciate it. Well, you've heard from Ade Omale, uh, the chair of the Nigeria Diaspora Voting Council. Well, the, the presentations continue. I'll then head back to you now, um, Ladi.